Okay, so we are discussing logic gates, and the logic gates are very, very important in engineering and this time in electronics because they help us to program. If you want to come up with certain results, you want um, some results that you can make use of, we always rely on logic gates. Now, how do they work? First of all, we'll start by discussing the, the signals. There are two families, two main families of signals that are very, very useful in industry. So we start from here. Yes, remove this. Okay, so we have two types of signals. We have an analog and digital signals. In analog signals, these are signals that you have um, the, the frequency and amplitude changing all the time. That's what you have there. And what you are seeing in the diagram here is a typical shape of what you may see in an analog signal. But you can have something like that, or perhaps something that looks like that. That all represents an analog signal, something that is not constant by, by the way it is. The opposite of that is a digital signal. In a digital signal, you're dealing with specifics. It's either zero or one. Zero or one, nothing in between. So the value is represented along here, and this is the time that is elapsing. So, Apart from calling it zero or one, there are other terms that have been adopted. You can call it on, off, or true representing one, false representing zero. Of course, on represents one, and off represents zero. Then you can also have um, other ways that mean the same. You can have high, low, just like that. And the, in the end, you have this kind of a wave. If you notice, this one is confused. It doesn't have a specific uh, shape. But this always comes like that with a specific height there, representing a very a particular number. In our field of electronics, mostly, the value we'll be dealing with here would be a voltage. So that your voltage can be maybe say five volts, which is very popular. And in some cases, this could be nine volts, depending on what the, the kind of circuit you, you are tempering or you are handling. So that's about these zeros and ones and the kind of signals you have. So what is interesting in electronics is that um, most of the sensors that deal with um, the, 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 the environment, they pick this kind of a signal, which is uh, analog. But because the computer doesn't understand this analog signal, you have an ADC converter. ADC, meaning analog to digital converter. That's um, how come you have uh, such. So with such a converter, then you're going to change this from this to that, which can now be interpreted by your computer. Okay, then, um, oh, let me just clear up here. We have a number of gates which are in use. And um, what you are seeing here is the very first gate we are going to consider. This is an AND gate. In short, we are saying A and B. A and B. A and B. If you go the mathematical route, what you are doing here is like, a multiplication function. 
if I was to put zero here, no matter what number I use there, the answer will always come out as zero. If I was to exchange, I put zero there, but I say times one, what I'm going to have again will still be a zero. The only way I can have an output which is on, true, it will mean I should have one being multiplied by another one there. Then in that case, I'm ready to have a one. What do I mean? This makes it very clear. If you use this illustrative circuit, you notice that you have a battery here, the energy source, pumping electricity into this circuit. As it is moving like that, if A is open and B is open, then this bulb cannot be turned on. So that's what you have. A is open and B is open. Then the output is just like that. It's zeroed. So zero, zero, the end result is zero with the bulb there, meaning the bulb remains in the dark, load shedding. It <laughs> That's how come we put zero, zero, have a zero. Now, if we want, we can now make another step. What if we close A here? We close it, but B still remains open. Again, current will move. When it reaches here, it will find this opening. It can't move across. This will still remain in the dark. So one, the zero, the end result is still a zero. If we do it the other way around, we open this switch, but we close the other one there. If we were to close this, assuming this other one is open, again, this will still remain open because current will flow, but it will find an opening here. So in the end, this will still remain switched off. The only way you can turn on this power is by closing A and B meaning you have this current moving through A, which is closed, and through B, which is also closed. Then over to this, which is your power. Uh, we can please mute those mics. We are hearing interesting, interesting chickens uh, for relish. So here, we say that current now continues moving like that because these two switches have been closed. So then you have a complete circuit like that. That's how come we have one, one, with the output being one. If you put zero on any of them, that's what you have. The logic symbol for an AND gate is this. This thing looks like letter D if I was to cross it up here. This is making like your letter D. That's an AND gate. And then you have these two. But what I'm using here, this is the American standard. By the British standard, they use a square to represent this. So they will have something like that. And then for an AND, they will also put the symbol of AND inside there. Then you have an output line here with two inputs, one input and another output. So you have mm, A, and you have another one which is there as B, the output is here. I'm calling the output as X, but this output can also be something else. You can use something like um, maybe C, so that you have A, B equals C, A dot B equals C. So that's uh, about your AND gate. You need both of them. You need A and B to have an output on the other side, which is C, or in this case, we are using X. So the truth table is that simple and straightforward, meaning we can even use a multiplication to confirm it, but the illustrative circuit makes things easier. The cousin to this, or rather the exact opposite of this one, is the next one, or is not the exact opposite, but the other one, the counterpart, is this one. In this logic gate, you have two switches A and B, 
as illustrated there. If I open switch A and switch B, of course this bulb will still remain off. Current is not able to flow over to the other end, the circuit is incomplete. But if I close switch A, there, but switch B remains open, current will move through here and through there, which is through this path, which has just been closed, and all the way to the bulb and back. So then you will have that complete circuit like that. So that is how come we're saying one, zero. The end result is one. One on the output. Again, if you decide to open switch A, but you close this switch here, current will still pass through here. This side is open, so it will take the other path all the way through the bulb and back to the source, just as we define a complete circuit as electric energy coming from the source through the load and back to the source. So there you are, it will continue moving like that. So that makes your complete circuit, meaning here, if we close switch B, even if this is open, we'll still have that out. Again, if we close both switches, current will still flow through both lines and all the way through the bulb, and there we are. It means we put one here and one there. The output will be a one. So that's how come we're saying one one gives us one as the output. So this is an OR gate. In an OR gate, it means it's like a a meeting where you have two bosses. If one of the bosses is around, the meeting will still proceed. If any of the two is around, if this one is around, it will go ahead. If the other one is absent, but this other one is around, the meeting will still proceed. If both of these bosses are around, the meeting will still go ahead. But if these two bosses are, are absent, then we are sorry, the meeting can't take off. So, as clearly shown in that circuit. Now these are straightforward. They, they are referring to a circuit where things happen like that. But if, what if you go the route where things are happening in the opposite? Whereby, if you put in a zero, you expect a one, how? Look at the next one. This is known as a not get. A not get for the Britons or the British standards, it's like this. You have that box there. Of course, it's also going to have a not on the other end, because that's a not anyway. And then you will have the output line and one input line. So you have one input and one output. An output is always negated like that, showing that the result is not what we expected. All right, so in this case, what you are seeing, in fact, others say that this is A, what you put in is what you get out of there, can be equal to A with a bar on top. It's basically the same thing, saying that this has been complemented. Now the illustration I was giving is that uh, this is a, an interesting case where if you go to shop right with money, you go to buy something, then they chase you away. You won't get anything from there. But on the day that you go there with no money, that's when you are rewarded for going to shop right with no money. That is the truth table for a not get. One, the output is zero. Zero, the output is one. And that's the standard symbol. This is your American standard, with, of course, with the British standard. That's what you have there. Now, look at the circuit. In this circuit, it simply means that um, if you have this switch off, then current will continue flowing like that. And this bulb will be turned on. 
But if you decide to turn off the switch, meaning you close, I mean, to, to, to close the switch, you put a one there. Meaning, current will flow. From there, it will follow the easier path because there is too much resistance due to the load. So it will flow and pass through here. And as a result, this switch will remain off. It will be turned off. So zero, if you open this switch, this switch, this lamp will be turned on. But if you close that switch, the lamp will be turned off. So that's how come you have one giving us zero. Zero here giving us one, meaning one there. The switch has been turned on. And that's how come they make sense just, just like that. This not get a very simple explanation or a very simple application is the one we mentioned that uh, you have a tank. When a tank has fuel, full of fuel, that's when the bulb should be turned on. You have full of fuel, then the, the lamp, that indicator lamp should be on. The one which shows on the dashboard about the level of fuel. The moment you, you, you have fuel empty in your tank, then you activate that lamp. It means the lamp will be turned on, showing you that we have run out of fuel. So that's how this works out. It's the opposite. And uh, not get. But a not get mostly, they don't always work alone. We combine them with the other two we discussed. So the first combination is this one. And following the British standards, we have that, of course, plus this one. This one is simply saying you have this circle, or I mean, sorry, you have this square. Because it's and, for them by standard, they always carry that symbol and inside the same. Then you have that with two inputs coming out like that. Then on the output side, we we'll have that. Following this, the British standards, you still have a knot there and the two inputs behaving like that. The, the ones we are referring to, this is the American standard. You have your D like that. Put them together. This is what you have with a knot. That's a knot. Very, very important because if you forget this, then you defeat the whole purpose of a not get because it's there to negate. So here, when it comes to the truth table, just go back to the truth table for an AND gate. The truth table for an AND gate is this one. In this truth table, whatever you put there, as long as there's a zero somewhere, the result was zero. So in a, in a NAND gate, it's the exact opposite. So meaning where there's zero in the output, you have one. There again, there's a zero output, you have another one. Zero output, one. But here where you have one, one, the end result will be a zero. Meaning here where there was a one, that's what you have. So meaning it's just the exact opposite of the other one. And here is how it works out. One, 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 and you have your zero right there. If I go back to the circuit, you notice that, uh, just delete that so that we follow it closely the way it should. This one, delete that, okay. If I close, I mean, switch A and switch B are both open, then the bulb will be on because current will be flowing all the way to the bulb, just like that. But if, again, I decide to close switch A, but I open switch B, again, I'll have a one there, meaning the bulb will still remain on because it's open somewhere. Even if I decide now to close switch B, but open switch A, again, that, that bulb will still remain turned on. But if I close both switches, here there is one, B, one, 
I mean, put one there and another one right there. It means we have created now a barrier, something similar to what we saw in that not get illustration. Current will flow here. What will be reaching there won't be enough to turn it on. So this will mean you've turned it off. So that's how come one, one produce zero. But what is there to note is that this is the exact opposite of an AND get. And uh, it works out that way. Now, the other one, the counterpart to this is um, where you combine a NOT and an OR get. It happens here. Here you have a NOT get and an OR get. These two, when put together, this is what they give you, a NOR get, meaning NOT plus OR. With these two, the illustrated circuit comes out like that, where you have a source through a resistor. If these two are open, the bulb will remain on. But should you close any one of those switches or both of them, the bulb will be turned off. Meaning, if I close switch A, then current will move through the closed switch all the way there, thereby cutting out this one. If again I decide to close switch B, but I open switch A, I close switch B, I open switch A, again current will flow through there all the way and it will be doing like that, thereby turning off this other circuit here. I mean the, the bulb there. So that's how come to turn it off, you just need both of them to be open the way they are. If you close this one and you close the other one, then the, the result is zero. Or you close any one of them, zeros. So again, the truth table shouldn't be an issue because if you look at your OR gate, the results here were one, one, one but zero in the first one. Meaning that this time around, we can decide just to do the opposite. Where there is zero, you just put one. The rest of them, zero there, zero there, and zero, because this is one, the opposite, the opposite, the opposite. Just do the opposite, then you are done. That's how come we're saying that this is the exact opposite of the other one. So you can use the OR gate to review this other one because this other side, they are just the same. But here you do that and you are done. And that's where we are. If you look at this one, we are saying it's one, the rest of them are zeros, as illustrated by this small circuit here. So that's your NOR get, meaning that's how they can work together. Now, why did we take our time to discuss this? It's because if you look at them, they, they are combined like that. And inside an integrated circuit, these are the various components you find connect in various ways. Some of them could be just this one, but a number of them put there. And some of them could be a combination of this and one of the other one, which could be either or or maybe and. Then you have your circuit being completed. So from here, now it makes it easier for us now to start bridging and making those um, circuits, digital circuits, which can be turned on and off. And then we can easily now discuss an IC.